Hey hi, this is Vivek and in this particular video we're going to be talking about Bonsai Lemma and this is going to be the part 2 of the 5 part series. So if you have not checked out the previous part, please go ahead and check that out. Also if you have not subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to it. Let's move on to the second application of Bonsai Lemma and we have been talking about one simple one which was to have this 6 balls in a triangle phase and you have to color it with two colors. We talked about how does rotational axis and reflection axis kind of come into action and how do we kind of count, them, uh, count those, right? But in this particular problem, we're going to talk about a grid related problem. So this is a CACS problem, right? Counting grids. And the problem says that you have an N cross N grid and each of uh, square is painted either white or black. You have to find out like how many different such colorings are possible using two colors, white and black basically, such that it's not possible to rotate one of them uh, to the other, right? I mean, you cannot really rotate the whole board and get to the next other diagram, right? So it's just this particular rotation that we are talking about and one diagram could not be rotated to the other one, right? So that's what we are kind of looking at and we have to count the number of such distinct grids basically, right? So there is this N cross N and that's we have to do using two colors. So how do we do that? And we have to also find out the answer modulo this 10 to 9 plus 7, which is pretty standard for this kind of a problem. And N is up to 10 to 10 to 9. Okay, good. So let's move into analyzing how we solve problems of Burnside lemma. So we have these three steps, right? Step one, identify the axis of rotation or reflection. We don't have a reflection in this problem, so remove it off, right? We have rotations, which was in this particular kind of board. We have this axis and by which we rotate, right? So that is there, the axis of rotation is there. Identify the elements in, uh, fixed by a particular group. So let's say you rotate this particular thing by zero degree, 90 degree, 180 degree and so on, depending upon what kind of shape it is. but if you rotate and get the same kind of a diagram, then find out which are elements are getting fixed by that particular rotation, right? That's what we have to identify. And then according to the number of elements that are there in each of the chains or each of the like fixed element set, then we find out some sort of formula that kind of works to count for each rotation. And then we use the Burnside formula that for each particular group, we find out the each particular element of the group, we find out like, let's say, how do we, how many different kind of colorings are possible and we sum them up divided by total number of groups. That's what gives us the final answer. So this is what we do. We talked about this in the previous problem. Let's talk about that again in this particular problem. So we have this particular n equal to 4 and 5 case and first thing that you have to notice is that there is some sort of separate behavior when n is equal to odd and uh, n is equal to even and n is equal to odd. Why is that so? Because when you rotate, when it's even then there is this particular point which kind of shifts things across it, right? But when you have n equal to 5, there is this particular cell which kind of is at the exact axis of rotation. And this cell kind of changes the behavior based on whether it's even or not. So obviously for this particular problem, we have to separate out the even and odd cases and handle the even and odd cases using two different formulas. So let's separate them out. We can obviously separate them out, right? So let's say we have even and we have n equal to 4, this kind of a diagram, and we have to solve the problem. So if you see that there is this particular like rotational axis which is going outside the board and we can rotate it by this particular axis so the number different kind of rotations is obviously like there is this fixed element which is zero degree rotation then 90 degree if you rotate this board by 90 degree you obviously get the same kind of a diagram same diagram right then if you rotate it by 180 degree then also you get the same diagram then if you rotate it by 270 degree you rotate get the same diagram so these are the four different groups that we can form for this particular diagram using this rotational axis and for each of them, you have to now analyze which, how many different co like colorings do we actually need? So let's say if we, let's, let's try to analyze each one of them. So if we kind of rotate it by zero degree or so everything is kind of on its own place, no matter how many times you do it. So every cell is kind of independent. So you can choose like N square and uh, you have to sort of for every square that is there, all the n square cells that are there, you have free choices for coloring. So there are two colors for every cell and there are n square such colors, right? n square such cells. Plus, if you have, let's say 90 degree rotation. So think about this particular part of the board, okay? And this is the rotational axis over here. Now this part of the board, if you rotate by 90 degree, comes to this part, okay? This is for at the, at the start, after zero rotation. After one rotation, it comes to this place. After two rotation, it comes to this place. Okay. All these cells get covered by this exact zero cells that are there. And then at three, it comes to this particular part and then it comes back to the zero, right? So all the cells in each of these, in this first zero frame that is over here is kind of independent on itself, right? I mean, it's not going to get like merged with one another. So that is, that is for sure there. And then when you rotate, it kind of sweeps through all the board. 
so this kind of becomes equals to this this becomes equals to this this becomes equals to this so all the rest of the cells that are there on the board in case of an even even board becomes independent becomes uh, in the same set as one of the elements in this zero frame so this zero frame kind of contains n by 2 cross n by 2 which is n square by 4 number of elements and if you color this particular board and then you rotate it by 90 degree each time then the whole of the board gets colored right so you can think about okay what are what is the number of fixed like sets elements that are there in this per, for this particular group if you have to count that what we do is think about the minimal set that you have to color so that rest of the things after rotation gets colored automatically so if you sell, color up this particular zero grid right you kind of get a final answer uh, like this gets colored off and if you rotate it by 90 degree then again this will get colored off this will get colored off and this will get colored off so all the cells will get colored off right so if you color this much you are done with the problem so you have to just paint out n square by 4 and all of the rest of the colors are going to get fixed by these right with no overlap obviously so this is this right so for 90 this is the 91 next we have more terms let's think about 180 degree term so let me maybe uh, remove these stuff from the diagram that makes it a bit of cumbersome let me just go back a bit uh, this makes it pretty much cumbersome so what I will do is I will rotate, remove these numbering. So for that, we already have n 2 to the power, let's say n square by 4, n by 2 cross n by 2 plus for 180 degree rotation. You can think about this, like over here, you're going to rotate 180 degree. So if you see this particular part, this is 1, 0. And if you rotate it by 180 degree, it will become, it will come over this side and it will become one. And if you rotate it twice, then it will come back to its own place. So if you just color this much, the whole board will get colored if you do it by 180 degree. So you have to add two to the power n square by two, right? The whole cell by two. And then all of the rest of the stuff gets colored automatically. If whatever you color based on the 180 degree rotation, the corresponding cells are going to get the same color or automatically. So you just have to color the first cell, first portion. Okay. Plus 270 degree. So let's try to analyze the 270 degree part. So 270 degree is going to be very similar to 90 degree. Why is that so? Because this part over here, like let me maybe use red color. This part over here, if you rotate, uh, rotate once on this side with 270 degree, it comes to this, right? Then if you rotate again on this side, 120 degree, uh, seven, uh, 270 degree, it comes to this particular part. If you rotate again, it will come to this particular part, right? So again, similar kind of a structure as the 91. So it will again be 2 to the power n square by 4, right? And again, since n is even, all of these terms are divisible. So these are the four different terms that you have, okay, for each of the rotations. And re remember that using Burnside lemma, when you have these four groups that are there, so once you add the number of different, like unique fixed elements that are there and the number of ways to color them, you just divide it by 4. Note that there is a very nice thing in Burnside lemma whenever you are calculating something and you have to check whether your question, like calculation is actually correct or not. Like generally the numerator always has to be divisible by the denominator. So, I mean, it, it has to be a number, right? It's a number of ways to count. So counting can never be fractional. So whenever you are kind of thinking of some particular formula, right? And you're second guessing your counting and maybe you must might have missed some particular case what you can do is you can write the formula and then put a few values like n equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 some values on a computer itself you can do that like you can write a code to just put the values into the formula and see if it's actually getting divisible by the denominator or the number of elements number of different groups that are getting formed the mod g right so if that's not true that means there is something like you have made some mistake if it is then most probably it's correct if it's giving you the correct answer on the sample case so that's a very neat way to check burnside lemma's questions if you are making some silly mistake or not let's talk about uh, what we can do for odd case so in odd case you can again it's going to be this particular axis like it's, it's going to go across this and you have again uh, zero like obviously if you rotate it by zero degree it's going to be same two uh, 180 sorry 90 first obviously 90 degree rotation then 180 and then 270 right these are obviously there for this particular diagram and now uh, we note something that no matter which rotation it is this cell always remains at its own place for zero uh, it's going to be there are n square total cells so again it's going to be 2 to the power n square because for every cell it's going to be remaining at its own place no matter how many times you do it so it's going to be every cell has its two choices so n square cells have their own choices so it's the total number of ways how much 90 degree rotation so think about 90 degree rotation this remains in its own place okay and then if you think about this particular portion over here okay 
if we rotate it by 90 degree okay if we rotate it by 90 degree what happens mm, let's think about it if you rotate it by 90 degree this is zero at zero rotation it will come over here with a 90 degree rotation which is one it will come over here with a 90 degree rotation which is two and which will come over here with a 90 degree rotation which is three and if you rotate it again then it will come back to zero right so if you just somehow color this zero with all unique all different kind of colorings that are possible and with 90 degree rotation rest of the things gets filled so this is the fixed set this this kind of gives you the size of the fixed set and for each of them you can kind of color it with two different colors so it's going to be two to the power it's going to be n minus one by two right that that's going to be the size of this side and it's the other side is going to be so this is going to be n minus one by two okay that's interesting and the other side is going to be n plus one by two right which we can simplify which is going to be n square minus one by four but anyways so this that's going to be the dimension of this for each of each one of these cells you have two choices and if you fix that the rest of the things gets fixed by this 90 degree rotation so that is what you add over here next is 180 degree so in that case if you combine this zero block and then one block okay this is the shape that you will get and if you rotate it you will get the same shape over over here if you think about it this shape over here right and then it will come back so it's just going to be the twice of this particular number so it's going to be 2 to the power n minus 1 into n plus 1 by 2 instead of 4 by 4 plus 270 is going to be very similarly as per, as per the previous problem um, it's going to be very similar to the 90 degree one because this zero is going to shift to this place and then like if you rotate even if you rotate this side it's like minus minus 90 degree rotation so it's going to come to this place come back to this this so it's going to be the same term over here this is going to be 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 into n plus 1 by 2 that's what we are going to have over here and divide by 4 because there are four different axes of rotations four different groups in this particular by this axis of rotation okay so that's what we find as an answer for the odd case right so let's quickly summarize the final formula so the answer is going to be equal to based on if it's even we're going to have if we go back and try to see so i'm just trying to write it from memory 2 to the power n was the full cell plus 2 to the power n square for the full cell zero degree rotation 2 to the power n square by 4 for 90 degree rotation plus 2 to the power n square by 2 for 180 degree rotation plus 2 to the power n square by 4 for 270 degree rotation by 4 this is for even right now let's move on to the odd case okay so for this one what we have is 2 to the power n square is going to remain same which is like nothing changes plus if we go back there is one particular change that we need to do over here in all of these colorings of 90 to 180 and 270 we missed out on one particular point that these were kind of coloring this zero right we also have the choice for coloring this one cell which is going to be fixed at its own place so all of these terms gets multiplied by two because we have that choice for that one extra element okay so that is something we have to take care of so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just multiply it with two multiplied by like two for every sing central cell and then we're going to have for 90 degree rotation we're going to have two to the power n square minus one by four okay so i'm just multiplying this n minus one into n plus one as n square minus one this is a known formula plus uh, let's take for 180 degree rotation is going to be twice of this so two n square minus one by two plus again for 270 degree it's going to be 2 to the power n square minus 1 by 4 all multiplied by 2 this 2 multiplication is common to all divided by 4 that's going to be the answer for odd one i mean you can obviously simplify these stuff and you can calculate them up but this is what the answer looks like also since in the question you're given modulo so you have to calculate these 2 to the power n square stuffs and like n square can be calculated uh with proper without any modulo because you don't really n has only 10 to the power 9 and we can do that with uh, we can calculate all these numerators separately and then uh, like we can use binary exponentiation to calculate all these numbers on the numerator inverse is possible with the modulo so you can invert four and get the answer right so that's the final formula for this one this is how you can count for this particular case this particular grid counting kind of problems and this is a very interesting problem a very similar problem colorful grid if i remember the name correctly that came up as a decider problem in one of uh, 
i think regionals of in, uh, india india regionals in 2015 if i'm if i'm not wrong in the online rounds so not really regionals it was in the online rounds and if you could solve that problem i guess your team would get selected for whichever region you were selected to so this is really an interesting idea and can actually help you to get selected at um, in icpc as well this is really important uh, i hope this kind this makes some sense we're going to talk about more such problems in the coming up series prob problems or the next parts of this particular series if you're liking this series please do leave out a like because that kind of motivates me to make more such videos and i'm going to keep making more such content and if you want to get notifications for that definitely subscribe and like and press the bell icon so let's move on to the next particular part and let's talk about the a new really interesting problem which is related to some sort of cubes right uh, in the next video. So let's go to that one. Join me over there.